following the parliamentary story last week where there was some voting and some concerns, you know that parliament today has had to have another conversation about whether they will agree to do something or not. It is reported that the uh, vote will be taken tomorrow, uh, if at all, on the revenue situation. The majority is, is arguing, uh, well, are they arguing? They are negotiating with the minority to approve these revenue estimates and targets because if they don't, it will affect the IMF negotiation and the revenue uh, targets that are before parliament, the bill, all together will raise four point something billion cities per year over the next three years or so. And so that has been fitted into the plan uh, to tell the IMF that we'll be, we'll be able to gain significant revenue and, and be able to pay their loans, etc., etc. So that's going up for Parliament uh, consideration tomorrow, according to what the business committee provided to the parliamentary press call tonight. Okay, but following that conversation on Thursday, where these voting issues occurred, it has become important for people to look at Parliament in the way that some of us have been saying for a while, that in 2024, it's not going to be a presidential election, it's a parliamentary election. That, there's going to be a lot of fights in Parliament. Whoever wins the Parliament really has a foothold, I guess, in the presidential. So it's going to be very big. So we've taken it upon ourselves now to be researching into it. Tonight, we're going to present you with the 21 constituencies where the victory was by less than... Uh, 5%. And we're going to keep an eye on these constituencies from now, especially with the primaries, what's going to happen in the primaries. is going to significantly tell us what we need to know. But before then, we would like to uh, give an impetus to the story about parliament and the, the, the close margins with which as many as 20 seats were won. Uh, you saw on social media a, a member of parliament who went back to his constituency who was under pressure from the constituents for not being uh, articulate in parliament, for not being heard in parliament. And we hear all that people, when the primaries come and people want to remove MPs, they say that we're on Casada, Menenete, Erekoda, and that kind of thing. So this guy, I think, was under pressure and was re responding to the reason why he has not spoken in parliament. Hear him. Maybe I'm into a parliament. Speak out on whom are you? Maybe I'm into a parliament. all right, so that's the member of parliament. He said that where he sits in parliament now, he was speaking on one of the campaign uh, forms of President Mohammed. You could see President Mohammed's logo behind him. And he's explaining to his constituents that where he sits in parliament, he is, he's obscured because there's a pillar in front of him. Even when he wants to speak, the speaker does not see him. Is that very honest, what he's telling his people? I, I don't know. Because I know that parliament, in terms of who speaks, is, is arranged. It's not, it's not as simple as that. There may be some simplicity, but that is controlled by the leadership. Uh, members of parliament who are backbenchers will often not be called by the speaker unless it is part of the plan where the, the side of where the member of parliament belongs will so tell the speaker that some judge will speak after that this one will speak after that this one will speak and after that the minority leader will wrap up on our side then they go to the majority and they'll say that uh, patrick boama will speak after that this person will speak abdu abu, abu Jinapo will speak then asensu will speak and that and then the leader will wrap it up on our side so when the speaker has the list in front of him, he knows that next to speak on the majority side is Samuel Abla Jinapo. He raises his head, he sees him and says, uh, Honorable Member for Damango, but it's already on the plan. So this issue about I have to raise my hand and there's a pillar in front of me, I, I'm not so sure. Anyway, let's look at those constituencies that we're talking about here. Look at Ahanta West, for instance. Ahanta West was won by 7%, okay? Uh, and we'll get you the, the MP in a minute. So the MP for Ahanta West... Um, the guy who won it, I believe it is uh, Emmanuel um, Okumi Ando. No, no, it was won actually by uh, the MPP candidate, Kojo Kum. Kojo Kum won it by 27,940 something, and the NDC got 23,900 and something. So 51 and 41 well, won by only 7%. Let's move on and see the rest. This is the constituency is called Isikado Keten, uh, Joseph Gate, who is running for MPP presidential uh, at this time and therefore is no, no longer running for the seat. Uh, he managed a 26,000 
and uh, Grace Ayensu Dankwa came up with 24,000. And the difference was 4% win for Joe Gatti at a Cicado Keten, where President Akufado won it quite comfortably. Okay, let's look at the rest. Western region, this is Shama, another constituency uh, won. Uh, it was won by the uh, 22,000. That's the NPP won it. Shama constituency, uh, Eric Abaka. Is he the one who's passed or so? There's some story like that. I have to check it. But this is Shama, one of those constituencies we put down a 6% win. Uh, in the last election. Then the next one, this is 1% win, Takwa Swayim. That's amazing. It's only 1% win. It, is, it was won by George Mekuduka, who is the deputy minister for uh, lands, who believes that he has strengthened his position now. But he got 31,946, and then NDC got 31,000. NDC's John Justice Aban got 31,845. Uh, uh, 33.56, 33.46, 1% difference is what uh, MPP won Takwa and Swayim with. All right, then Amenfi West also showing 4%. We have Amenfi West 4%, then we have uh, Cape Coast North and South 3% marginal wins. That's very, very tight. Okay, now let's go to the data. Let's, let's go to the data and see which party needs to be more careful in this particular analysis as, as we build up to the primaries. So then, now we take the data analysis that we've done, it's clear, it's here. It's, it says that most seats won marginally were won by the NDC. Out of 21 seats with marginal votes difference, the NDC had 13, while the MPP had 8. The central and western regions recorded the most constituencies with marginal votes difference, 11 constituencies in all. Let's move on. The NDC also secured most of the narrowest wins, that is, wins of 1% or less. Thus, the MPP did not only lose many seats to the NDC in 2020 from the record, uh, the record high of 2016, but had lost a number of seats so marginally, very, very marginally in the year 2020. All right, let's look at some of the breakdown analysis. We'll be doing this analysis as we go along, so you can follow us. And then when D-Day comes, we have been building it up for a while. So the breakdown as follows. Pusiga for NDC is 0.1%. Uh, That's how they won. Number two, Ablekuma Central is for NDC, 0.2%. Savlugu is for NDC, 0.2%. Sene West is for NDC, 0.1%. Uh, Gomwa East is for NDC, is 1%. Uh, Upper Dentra West is for NDC, is also 1%. And then you have uh, Banda is for NDC is 1%. Takwa and Swayim, 1% for NPP now. Sefiwi also 1% for NPP. Uh, Ebura Asebu Kwaman Kese is 0.3% for NPP. And then Techiman South is 0.4% for NPP. Uh, then you have the regions with the marginal wins. So Central Region, there are six constituencies in Central Region that recorded very, very marginal wins as, as we have looked at it. And then in uh, Western Region, there are five constituencies also that recorded something similar. And then Greater Accra, you have three constituencies that recorded uh, marginal wins. Only three in Greater Accra. Okay, Bono East, you have two. Ashanti Region, you have one constituency that recorded marginal. Uh, Western North has one. Bono has one. Uh, Northern has one and Upper East has another. So all of these constitute the 21 constituencies that we should keep an eye on, especially for the places that the NDC won marginally in terms of what happens at the primaries, which is occurring uh, in uh, May, May 13th or so, and today they put up uh, the ballot. So this is our first take of the first 20 constituencies, the, the most closely fought 21 constituencies in the 2020 election. NDC have 13, MPP have 8. We keep an eye on them and see whether the primaries is retaining the same uh, candidates, in which case you can think of it being stronger, or whether the primaries is changing them, whether the presidential election went one way or the other to give us a sense of, you know, balancing and dealing with this matter, isn't it? All right, now let's go to the text messages. Uh, please get ready. Whilst uh, we look also at the, uh, the ballot, the NDC also put up the ballot. The ballot paper was done. So President Mahama is first on the ballot. Kojo Bonsu is second on the ballot. And uh, Dr. Kobna Dufour is third on the ballot. They're going to put that up in a minute and then...